welcome back to my channel and a slightly different setup because I'm on the floor <laughs> and there's a reason for that because I wanted to be closer both in height and proximity <laughs> to my book trolley so this is the same thing that everybody on the internet has these days if they make book content we all love a book trolley and it's basically a three-tiered little shelf trolley or cart where a lot of people store their books it's not exclusively what they can be used for but I know if you're on the book world online then you'll probably have seen people use them for books like I do I had a blue one originally of these a little while back but when I moved back up to Edinburgh my mum commandeered that one for her art supplies totally cool with me she is letting me live in her house <laughs> and I decided to replace it with this pink one after a little while when I was missing it and I do love it I think it's a really nice way to just sort of like pull books from all my different shelves in different genre spaces and different categories depending on how excited I am for them and, and give me this sort of more neat selection to pick from when I'm picking my next book which helps me because I do have a lot of books to read and sometimes it's overwhelming so this changes every now and then depending on the reading mood I'm in and I wanted to show you basically what was currently on it it is a video I've seen other booktubers do and I really enjoy watching. I know it's a little bit random but given that, like I said, I enjoy watching them, I'm thinking maybe you will as well so I thought I'd go through my cart. I only have TBR on the top two shelves. The bottom shelf I usually use for books I need to haul in a video. At the moment there's only two down there and candles. Randomly I keep my candles down there. There's no real rhyme or reason to it but that's like an easy place to grab them. So we've got two shelves of TBR here which I'm going to show to you. Before we do that however I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video because they are a huge continuous supporter of my content and it means the world to me so please <laughs> give it up for Skillshare. Now if you haven't seen me talk about Skillshare in the past or anyone else talk about Skillshare in the past or even just feeling a little bit rusty on what they have to offer then Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of courses on potentially thousands of different topics, at least if we think in the sort of like minuscule um, subtopics of different topics. And I love their platform because it's not just a matter of getting like a brief 15 minute tutorial on something. They are genuinely in depth, lesson by lesson planned out courses that feel really structured and really helpful and you can also do it from home. And usually I highlight a course I have watched very recently and really benefited from, but I wanted to emphasize the sort of longevity of Skillshare's courses and the benefit that they have brought to me in my work life in the past because over the sort of past year or two I have um, expanded my repertoire when it comes to my freelance work and Skillshare has been a great help in that particularly in aiding me to use the Adobe Creative Cloud. So I had used some of the applications involved in the Adobe Creative Cloud in the past but I didn't um, invest in it and install it onto my own computer until just over a year ago and it has been such a wonderful yet like mind-boggling learning process because there's a lot going on there even if you just consider how many different applications are available like InDesign, Photoshop, Premiere Pro and so many more and in particular I have been making use of Premiere Pro recently. You may not really be able to tell in terms of these videos or just sit down little casual videos um, but I am working on a slightly grander hopefully video project that I'm hoping will like manifest and all work out and be cool and for that I really really wanted to step up the editing and shake things up a little bit and Premiere Pro allows me to do that whereas in the past I have been very familiar with iMovie as a basic program and also Final Cut Pro is what I've usually worked with when it's come to more advanced editing and although I can do all the same things with Premiere Pro it has meant learning a new program and if you're looking to get to grips with Premiere Pro I really want to recommend one course in particular as a beginner's guide and that is learn Premiere Pro and edit a how-to video for beginners from Halise which I just think is such a great like jumping off point course for this specific topic but if you think you would benefit from courses like the one I've just mentioned as well as many others then why not give Skillshare a shot I will have a link in the description box which will give the first 1,000 people to click on it a free trial of Skillshare Premium which works out at less than $10 a month for an annual subscription if you do decide to carry it on. So what can I say? Why not give it a try? But once again just a massive thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. It is a massive support in terms of helping me make content for you guys. But without further ado, 
let's have a look at the TBR book cart. So I think one of the fun things about going through these books is that you're going to get an idea of the kind of genres I'm currently obsessed with because that is very much what I have been putting on this uh, trolley. But if I pick three up at random, the first three I have here are Burn Our Bodies Down by Rory Power, which is a YA thriller. I'm not sure if there's any paranormally edges to this. I think it might just be pure contemporary thriller um, but I know Rory Power's books are meant to be quite terrifying even if they are YA so I'm super excited for this one I think it sounds so brilliant and I also have another YA thriller like I said there's definitely themes here this is Eight Pieces of Silva by Patrice Lawrence um, this is about a girl whose sister goes missing and she ends up trying to piece together the clues of where her sister has disappeared and whether something terrible has happened to her I also think there's bi rep in this book I'm not sure what form it comes in but it's so nice to just like have more LGBTQ plus rep in my general book reading and my ge general genre reading. Um, we also have a book that is an adult book with a bit of a sci-fi twist but it's definitely still in that mystery thriller category which is The Rift by Nina Allen. This is another one about a girl who has a sister and in this instance the sister went missing but now the sister's returned and is claiming to have been abducted by aliens. So I don't know the extent to which the sci-fi aspect of this book is true or not or whether it's um, something entirely different and there was no aliens or if there are aliens but I've been meaning to read Nina Allen for ages. She writes horror, mystery, little bit of sci-fi and I hear such great things so this one in particular is, is on the cart for a reason and I would like to get to it soon because I feel like this is an author I could love and would love to get to grips with their writing. We do have a nice little mass market paperback thriller here as well because give me all the thrillers right now. I don't know what it is but my main two genres I'm feeling at the moment are thrillers and romance. Don't know how those two things fit together except I'm kind of hoping they're going to in here because I was looking for thrillers online which also had romance subplots and this came up as a recommendation so I bought it second hand a little while ago. It's a little beat up mass market paperback that's clearly been well read and loved before and I'm hoping I'm also going to enjoy it. But it is, as you can see, Midnight Bayou by Nora Roberts. Nora Roberts, very, very famous. I have never read a Nora Roberts book in my entire life but I'm hoping this could potentially be the first one for me and I'm hoping it's going to be part freaky deaky thriller novel mystery as well as like a little bit of a love story romance drama flung in there because I don't know why I just want both of those things. I kind of feel this happens to me a lot I get really into specific genres and then I really want books that blend those genres. I don't know how it's going to work but I want it to work and I hope it does so let me know if you have more thriller romance recommendations? Is that even a thing? Like I, I feel like there must be more books out there like that because I'm not the only one that loves those two genres. I then have a non-fiction book actually so there is something a little bit more different here. This is Dead Girls by Selva Almada although I will say this is true crime which I guess kind of fits into my thriller binge but also I've never read a true crime book before. I know must be the only person on the planet because everyone's obsessed with true crime. I've never read one and this one sounds a little bit different and um, more up my street in terms of what I would be looking for if I were to read True Crime and that's because it's very much exploring um, the kind of victimology and the society that um, creates the crime that went on. So this is about um, a group of women who were all murdered or went missing in Argentina and um, the surrounding events and kind of uh, the, the Argentinian justice system and everything that happened around that crime. So it doesn't feel from the blurb to salacious which I, I, I worry with true crime. It sounds like it's going to be very sensitive towards the women that were the victims of this crime. So I'm hoping I'm really going to like this. I also do have some middle grade. So yes, it's a little bit different. Maybe all of that romance and thriller fiction is making me want a little bit of middle grade afterwards to cleanse my palate. I don't know. But this was one that my friend Gavin sent to me as a gift. We did a book haul swap a few months ago. I'll link that video down below and his channel. He's absolutely fantastic. And king of middle grade. He has such good middle grade recommendations. So the fact that he picked this for me gives me such faith I'm going to like it and it's going to be a fantastic one. Although I will say it may not be a thriller, it does have a bit of a mystery aspect because there's a ghost. <laughs> This is The Ghost of Ghostwater by Lucy Strange and it's set in the Lake District in 1899 and has a haunting subplot so that may also be why it appeals to me so much now but all in all I just think it's good to have a little bit of middle grade 
palette cleansing literature at hand. We then have what is more of a romance story, although this is a fantasy romance, and that is Dragon Unleashed, uh, book two in the Fallen Empire series. So this is the sequel to Phoenix Unbound by Grace Draven, and I really, really enjoyed Phoenix Unbound. It's not my favourite Grace Draven, but I did really enjoy it. I love Grace Draven in general, and this I'm so excited for because it follows a new central character, and there's dragon lore. So I feel like it's just going to be one of Grace Draven's potentially best books for me because I already know I like her fantasy romances but the fact that there's dragons is just extra bonus points and I love her and this cover I mean stunning look at this cover this is gorgeous the only thing about sitting on the ground is pins and needles I'm starting to develop pins and needles <laughs> we then have another thriller and that is The Last House Guest by Megan Miranda so the reason I just popped this on my trolley is because I'm very recently read a Megan Miranda. I read my first Megan Miranda in January and really enjoyed it. So this one immediately got moved from my generic bookcases to the TBR cart because I knew I wanted to pick it up soon. This one's about Avery whose best friend's death was ruled a suicide. However, it's a year later and it has been uncovered that it was actually a murder and she's now the prime suspect. So I don't know what's going to happen. But like I said, I really, really liked Megan Miranda's other thriller, The Perfect Stranger. So I think I'm going to like this too. Another thriller, I know, I know, I know, <laughs> that I have on my TBR cart is The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. Another thriller author that's very well loved, very well respected that I've never read. I know. I've never read Ruth Ware. I think I picked this one up because Books and Lala raved about it, but I know a lot of people have raved about it since, so uh, it could just be generic booktube hype that got me on board with this, but it does sound really good. It's set in the Highlands in a smart house, and the children that the nanny is meant to be looking after die and she's accused of killing them but was it the smart house which sounds terrifying like I'm hoping this is gonna be really freaky. We then have Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay, which is a historical book inspired by Jane Eyre. So it's not a direct retelling of Jane Eyre because in the universe this is set Jane Eyre is its own novel and we follow a woman called Jane, called Jane Steele whose life has a lot of parallels with Jane Eyre but is also a fan of the book. The big difference however is that she's a murderer unlike Jane Eyre <laughs> who to my knowledge was never a murderer it certainly wasn't in the book <laughs> so Jane Steele has the added sort of drama of being a murder novel a novel about a murderess as well as following a lot of the plot points of Jane Eyre which sounds so intriguing and it's also the uh, book club read for my Patreon book club at the moment so we're currently reading this book and I've actually just started it as you might be able to tell from this little bookmark so I am really looking forward to seeing where this one goes it was a gift from my friend Leanne who I also did a book haul swap with and I will try and remember to also link her channel and the video down below these things I often forget so do remind me if I don't um, but yeah raved about by Leanne currently my patreon book club read and very exciting plot we then have a fancy novel which is The Changeling's Journey by Christine Spears and this one is based in Scottish folklore I believe the author herself is Scottish and this book is set in Scotland it's, it's about a, it's about a changeling called Morvin who up until recently had another changeling companion in her village but she died so she's now the only changeling in her human village and potentially she has to go to the fae realm because she's in danger I'm not sure exactly what is in store for her but I love changing fo but I adore changeling folklore. Changeling folklore is so intriguing to me. It's something I've always found fascinating since I was very very young and I cannot wait to read a book about a changeling. We then have Chilling Effect by Valerie Valdez and this is a science fiction novel which sounds like it has a comedic twist and I think this sounds brilliant. I have read a lot of comedic sci-fi and fantasy in my time but almost exclusively written by men and I think it's going to be really nice to have a book in that subgenre written by a woman and I'm hoping I'm going to love this one. I'm actually buddy reading it this month with my friend Leanne who I've already mentioned from Literary Diversions so if you are interested in sort of reading it at the same time as us you could read it this month we'll obviously both be reviewing it on our channels after we read it but yeah if you were planning on reading this anyway we're also going to be reading it in February and I think it sounds like a lot of fun plus look space cats let's just carry on in the Leanne theme shall we because apparently Leanne has everything to do with my TBR at the moment the next book on the cart was The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell which is a thriller novel that my friend Leanne gifted to me in that very same book <laughs> called Swap and this is a thriller Leanne says it's a un put down a bow read in one day thriller which sounds so fantastic and I really want to do a video where I try and read 
seven books in seven days, like a reading vlog, and I'm hoping this could be a good book for that if it's the kind of book that you cannot put down because that's what you need, right, if you're going to try and read seven books in seven days. So let me know if you'd be interested in that. It might be a March project, I might not have time to do it in February, um, but if I do then I'll definitely be picking this one up for it. I then have Tools of Engagement by Tessa Bailey, which is a romance novel, can you tell that cover is romance through and through. It's a contemporary romance and it's the third in a series, so the first book in the series was Fix Her Up, loved book one, hated book two, have no idea what to expect from book three but want to complete the series and I'm hoping it will be more like book one, so yeah. <laughs> then lastly for shelf one I have a poetry collection which is A People's History of Chicago by Kevin Koval. I am so desperate to find a new favourite poet, it has been ages since I've fallen in love with a poetry collection and I've been intrigued by this one for a really 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 long time. It's published by Haymarket Books who are one of my favourite publishers. I absolutely adore what they publish and I'm hoping that that means I will adore this. It's a very political collection which I love, I love political poetry so I don't know what to expect other than I've seen good reviews for it but stylistically who knows if I'll click or not. If I do love it you will obviously hear about it. I then have a graphic novel and that is Bingo Love by T Franklin, Jensen Ong and Joy San and this is the cutest comic book graphic novel ever. It's a standalone like comic book graphic novel format and it is about a queer romance between two women over the ages so they can't initially be together I don't think when they're younger but they meet up again when they're older women at the bingo hall and I just think it sounds so cute and, and that brings us to shelf two. So on shelf two we have another non-fiction title and that is Mad, Bad and Sad, A History of Women and the Mind Doctors from 1800 to the Present by Lisa Apignanasi and this is obviously like I said a non-fiction book. It's a chunky non-fiction book but it sounds so compelling. It's all about the history of the treatment of women's mental health which is a fascinating if disturbing and really upsetting topic. It's something I've read little bits of here and there. I've read fiction books dealing with the topic but I've always wanted like a really good comprehensive study and this sounds exactly like that. I'm currently reading Pain and Prejudice which is a modern book all about um, the treatment of women's pain. So physical pain in the history of medicine and I really really think when I finish that I'm going to be picking this up immediately because I'm hoping I'll get like a really comprehensive look at all aspects of women's health in terms of the history of that so yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. We then have a nice little novella which is To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. Becky Chambers wrote The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet which was one of my favourite books of 2020. It was a five star, absolutely adored it and this is a standalone novella uh, which is also set in a far future sci-fi space setting um, where we are terraforming new planets because Earth has become hostile and I don't know much else about it other than it's written by Becky Chambers and it's another sci-fi story and I love her so I'm hoping I'm going to love this. <laughs> We then have book six and the final book in the Seven Waters series which is Flame of Seven Waters by Juliet Merlier and this was recently sent to me as a gift by a very kind subscriber called Chris and I'm so grateful because I've been putting off reading this book 100%. I adore this series, it's one of my favourite series of all time and because of that I've been so scared to finish it even though I really want to know what happens in book six and um, see the whole whole world and the story wrap up except it also makes me want to cry thinking about it but I can always go back and reread it so now that I have a physical copy and it's on my TBR cart I have no excuses I'm gonna have to read it ASAP. These are historical fancy books set in medieval Ireland with wonderful strong intriguing female protagonists and each book has a different protagonist so yeah love these. We then have The Duke's Suspicion by Susanna Craig which is obviously a historical romance I mean look at that cover <laughs> what do you think and this is about a young Irish woman who dreams of becoming a botanist but is suspected of being a spy for whatever reason I have no idea but I loved the other book by Susanna Craig that I read it was one of my favourite romances, particularly historical romances, so I have faith that I'm going to love all of her other books. We then have Elazzo by Darcy Little Badger which is a YA, I think it's YA rather than middle grade kind of mystery novel following a young Native American girl in an alternative history US which is full of magic and danger and her cousin goes missing and she ends up um, on the hunt to find her cousin. So another bit of a mystery. Really really looking forward to this one. I've also heard fantastic things. We then have book two in a middle grade series by Catherine Arden and this is Dead Voices. This is a sequel to Small Spaces which I read last year and is a kind of creepy goose 
Goosebumps-esque middle grade horror and I loved it. I loved everything about Small Spaces. I thought it was so unnerving for a middle grade book and I loved the story and the writing. So I'm super excited to get on and read book two basically. When you start going through them one by one it feels like a lot more books than it looks. Um, this is Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. This was a gift from my friend Tasman very very kindly and it sounds so intriguing. I've heard such good things about this book. The story however is about Mila who has recently aged out of the foster system and been offered a job as a teacher in a rural location. I'm not sure what the circumstances of that are but she jumps at this opportunity to start afresh until she discovers maybe it's haunted. We then have a school for unusual Girls by Kathleen Baldwin and this sounds like a kind of fantastical historical mystery which ticks all my boxes, love all of those genres. It's 1814, Napoleon is exiled on Elba, Europe is in shambles, Britain is at war on four fronts and at a strange house, a school for unusual girls, five young ladies are secretly being trained for a world of spies, diplomacy and war. I mean, how could you say no? We then have Spectacle by Jodie Lindsdrock and this is another one set in the 19th century, a little, little bit later, in 1887. And we follow our main character, I believe, as a coroner or a pathologist or works in a morgue, some something along those lines, but can also talk to the dead, which sounds inconvenient but also helpful. I can't decide whether you would want that or not. So it's all about her getting involved in solving mysteries because of this talent. We're well past three quarters of the way now though. We then have Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. This is another horror novel, fantastical horror novel, by an author who I have loved for a few years but hadn't read a horror novel by until the very end of last year. And to be honest, like with her other books, I just absolutely adored it so I'm now super excited to read more of her horror. We then have a non-fiction book which is Abolition Democracy by Angela Y. Davis, Beyond Empire, Prisons and Torture. This one's super short so shouldn't take me long at all but I adore Angela Davis's prose. She's such a phenomenal non-fiction writer. She makes such important yet intense topics so accessible and this one is particularly about the Abu Ghraib prison scandal and just generally um, justice in America so I think this one should be really really informative. We then have The Murders of Molly Southbourne by Taddy Thompson. This is about a girl, it's a, it's a novella and it's about a girl who every time she bleeds spawns another version of herself and that version of herself then tries to kill her. I have no idea what to expect from this but it sounds so interesting. <laughs> we then have another middle grade and this one much more cheerful than the last one which was horror and that is The Long Lost Home which is book six and also the final book in a favourite series which is The Incorrigible Children of Ashton Place series by Mary Rose Wood and it's just another one that I'm so scared to finish because I read all five books prior to this last year, adored them all and now can't bear to finish. Then we have more non-fiction, I don't know why all the non-fiction seems to be down here but it is and that is Leftover Women, The Resurgence of Gender Inequality in China by Lita Hong Fincher. Another theme you may be noticing on this TBR cart is authors I have recently read and now want to read more of because I also read another book by Lita Hong Fincher last year which was Betraying Big Brother all about the uh, current feminist movement in China and it made me want to learn more and this is another book by her but an earlier book that's more about the history of women's rights and gender inequality in China um, and gives you a little bit more context I feel to uh, the book that I've already read so I'm just looking forward to learning more. We then have two more books, the penultimate one of which is another non-fiction and that's Antigone Rising by Helen Morales, The Subversive Power of the Ancient Myths. So this is all about the use of ancient myths in a modern context to explore modern issues of say gender inequality, feminism etc etc. Then lastly The White Mare by Jules Watson which is book one in the Dalriada trilogy, a historical fantasy series set in Scotland that I've been meaning to try for ages. And that brings me to the end of my TBR car. Hopefully you found it interesting just sort of seeing all the books I'm currently the most excited for. There's definitely a lot of trends here. You can kind of tell what reading mood I'm in and what I've been enjoying recently from what's on here. But in saying that I can always do with some encouragement on what to pick up next. So let me know if you've read any of these and what ones you think I would love. What did you think of them? Even if you hate them, I want to know why. Let me know. Again, I just want to say a massive thank you to Skillshare who will of course be linked in the description box down below and until next time happy reading I'll see you all again soon bye everyone